Hello everyone and welcome back to the news of the week with me, your news host Panda Pops. Woo! So here I am bringing you the latest news for the sandbox this week. Let's jump right into it. So our first set of news is the Builders Challenge has now started. Amazing event for builders in the sandbox. There is a 1 million sand reward pool to be shared between all of the winners. All of the important information is in here. I will touch on some of it, but otherwise, if you have any additional questions, please do ask during the live shows. So how it works, all creators with eligible experiences could win. You can click here to find out what constitutes an eligible experience. This will last for 10 weeks, so from the 12th of February to the 22nd of April. Earn a percentage of the weekly engagement pool depending your depending on your experience's player engagement level. So you will earn a certain percentage depending on your player engagement level. There's loads here. Learning about earnings and eligibility. Download the Game Maker. Read the Medium. FAQ user here. Go check that out. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Next up is we have our events happening within the sandbox right now. So we have Space Invaders in Shibuya 109 land. Check those out. Shin Young event for Avatar holders. There's a prize fund right there. We then have Blast Valley that is open until february 22nd this is also for the blast head avatar owners so go check that out if you don't have one of the avatars you can mint one from the sandbox or you can go over to OpenSea and purchase yourself a secondary market avatar kuniverse season 2 event is still ongoing which has a prize pool open to everyone Path of the Legend, which finishes on the 26th of February. So go check that one out. We recently closed registrations for the Go Go Game Jam. If you would like to participate in our game jams, make sure that you are registering. They will always be shown over on this events page. So do keep an eye out there so you can register and be able to take part within those game jams. Box edit contests will also start appearing on this page. However, we will not have registration periods for those Vox edit contests. While I'm videoing this right now, the event isn't live. However, a brand new event will be going live called Love and Music. When this video goes out to you guys, there will be a new event, Love and Music. So do check out all of that. There's some really, really amazing games that you definitely need to check out for that event. Mentions of the week i know you guys absolutely love our mentions of the week so one of our artists ends i will show i will show their name and everything so you can go follow them on social media uh they made this amazing little shield it's a bonkus uh when shield one of another mention of our week is dave frog nft with this amazing dragon their video on it looks absolutely fantastic. I also want to highlight Hermit Crab Studios, who have done this amazing quick uh, like speed build video here, showing them creating an asset within Vox Edit. Really wanted to highlight that. I, I definitely want to make sure that um, our creators, especially ones that are, are creating content in this way, um, highlighting our products should definitely definitely get shout outs so absolutely amazing go check out hermit crab studios our sale mention of the week also goes to dayfrog nft for this amazing like metaverse biplane like look at this like there's there's a couple of faces i can i can see some areas where maybe may, maybe we could have cut down in some of these areas but Oh my gosh, is it a sleek, sleek asset right here. Thank you for joining me for the news of the week. Now back to your regular scheduled content. Whoop. Hey, welcome to the stream. 
Today we're going to continue building the PvP loop game uh, that I've been developing on this channel and also my own personal channel. Um, so some episodes happen in between. And basically what we're designing is a PvP game loop where you can earn currency by battling each other and then use that currency to buy upgrades and things that will improve your battle uh, the next battle. Um, or you can gamble it on the wheel, try to earn some more. Uh, so basically we've made this eight player, eight player game and um, we got a PvP lobby. So I'll give a quick demo just to show you guys what we're up to and we're going to build the upgrades and shop functions today, which is quite important. Uh, we'll have to work out how to allocate the purchases to the individual players. Um, so this is our lobby section and it costs 40 money to spin the wheel and you can randomly win something or lose your money on the wheel. Uh, we'll be using this shopkeeper today to be purchasing items. Right now there is no real function for them. This is just an example I put together real quickly. Um, and then we have a lobby system uh, where you can enter the next battle. Uh, each one of these cups are a different number. So if we go for this one, it will give us number one. And once we have a number allocated, we can't go back in there. So it stops the players from picking up two trophies, which is not uh, ideal because that means there'll be less players and it will confuse um, the logic. And then you can see there's a countdown at the bottom. It's a 30 second time one. And once that hits zero, it will teleport all the players to the battlefield that have picked up a trophy. Trophies disappear in the last few seconds, and now we're in a battlefield. Now you can see all the red, that's where all the um, players will spawn. Each number has its own dedicated spawn area, and you get to pick this up, and it automatically shoots every three seconds, and it's a big wall, so players can get pushed by it, and you can uh, push players off the map. That's the idea. Now the last test we did, it was a bit too much for multiplayer, too many moving platforms, too many spawning. Um, yeah, so we can't really use this idea in multiplayer at this stage. Um, but we'll still build the functions for the upgrades and you guys can use those uh, logics to implement in your own games. Uh, something that won't break the game maker like what mine, mine has done. So we survived for 55 seconds, we got 55 currency, spin the wheel, and then we can rejoin the next game, just like that. And then the next game begins, the floor respawns, quite simple, it's a good loop. Uh, the only thing we're missing out is the ability to use the money other than spinning the wheel. Uh, and that's where the shop comes into play. So I don't know how this mechanic's gonna work, uh, so we're gonna work that out together. I have a vague idea of how I will build it. Uh, let's see if it works out. So yeah, that's where we're up to. How is everyone today? Welcome to the stream. Say hey. If you have any questions, uh, let me know as well. I'm more than happy to answer and show you some logic. Hey, hey. Glad that you can hear me. Everything all good? All right, so. Now the shop function. This is where it's gonna be fun. I'm testing here in multiplayer. And the idea is to use the same sort of idea I did with the trophies. So you have a local variable and you can allocate a different number to each player. Um, or the players can have their own individual upgrades using local variables and we use a shop to upgrade them. So I'm gonna build some local variables. We won't have any actual function for them yet, but we're gonna see if the shopkeeper can take some money from us and change our local variable. And if that works, we can kind of play around with that idea. So let's jump straight in. All right, so our variable list is looking okay. Uh, it's not recommended to go over 20, and we definitely have under 20. 
Um, what we're going to do here is just create a number. We're going to make it local. And we'll say upgrade one. And upgrade one will be zero. We want to show it at the start of the game and we'll keep it to the left. Um, and this is just for the purposes of seeing if the logic works. And go ahead and create that. I'm going to do the same again. But this time upgrade two. And again, we'll keep it on the left hand side. And we will check that out. One and two. We can always add more later. But this is just to see if it works. Okay, cool, cool. Next, we're going to add a math rule. And here we can say upgrade 1.1. 1. 1. We will go ahead and I don't know if we should make it a message argument or not. Just thinking about it. It's probably not necessary. But we can always change it if, if it is. So we'll go ahead and just do the normal. We'll do upgrade 1. And we'll change the value to 1 when we need to. Oh, it adds 1 to the current value. Um, do we need a message to be sent out? Probably not. We'll keep that um, we'll keep that blank for now. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this one. And we'll just make this one upgrade 2. And we'll select the second upgrade. And we'll add a value of 1. And it needs a player action for this to work. Um, so if we go ahead and tab, we should see those two variables on the left. We do. We have upgrade one and upgrade two. Awesome. Next, we want to use the shop message to see if we can alter um, the variable. So at the moment, we have uh, you purchased a potion. And it says shop item one purchased. So what we can do here instead is change this one here to uh, upgrade one, 100 gold, and upgrade two, 200 gold. We'll just do 100 for the sake of testing. And here we'll just do the message upgrade 1.1. And upgrade 1.2. Cool. Um, next, we're going to select our right asker to let the player know uh, you have purchased upgrade 1. Just so they know what they've purchased. And this is one upgrade 1.2. And you purchased upgrade 1.2. Uh, what's this one? Uh, purchase failed. Sorry, you're too poor for this upgrade. Alright, cool. We'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll test to see if the shopkeeper allows me to change the variable in the rule system using the simple asker. Okay. So you can see on the left, they're both zero. And if we click the first one, you can see that it did upgrade. We didn't lose any money, um, but we can always add that in. And you can see the upgrade changes the uh, variable. So the first one, I must have uh, missed the message here. Upgrade 1.1, you have purchased upgrade 1. Uh, upgrade 1.1, 1 .1. Uh, asker. Uh, this is a single player asker, and this is a multiplayer asker. So the single player asker still, uh, it didn't send a message to it because it's single player, so multiplayer going to single player doesn't work. So we just got to go ahead and change that from single player asker to multiplayer asker. And you can see it's kept all those settings and you don't have to re-put those messages again. So now that we talk, when we talk to the uh, shopkeeper, 
the first one should give us one and it says all right so we're good and i can go ahead and do upgrade two and that's all good as well all right excellent so so far so good now we want the money to go down when that happens and we'll click on the gameplay and the rule system Excellent, and we'll go ahead and add and subtract number. And what we can do here is uh, minus minus 100. And we can do this one as well, minus 100. And we'll add it to the add and subtract number rule minus 100 and the number we want to change is the local money so the player's local money and the value we want to change it is minus 100 now that when we purchase the upgrades it should increase our local variable by one and minus our money by 100 and you can see our money in did indeed go down and same with upgrade two. Our money did go down. Now if we try to upgrade again, you can see it actually worked, but now we have minus 100. And what we actually need to do here is to compare to see if we actually got the money before it spends. So we've got the shop purchase failed, which is what it needs to be checking. So let's go back into rules. And we already set something up earlier for this shop. Um, you can click here to see where the shop is and then target that to bring it up. And this is our shop here. Um, we can go shop item one, shop item two, um, and that sort of thing. And you can say shop item one purchased uh, instead of saying upgrade 1.1.2 or whatever the case may be. Um, so this is one way to do it. So let's go and bring that near our uh, other one that we just created, our other rules, uh, wherever that may be, here. Okay. So we've got shop item one and shop item two. So that's a message we should be sending out and we can deduct the money as needed here. But what we can actually do now is we can um, we can add here shop item one purchased and shop item two purchased we don't need to take out the money here and we can get rid of these messages and what we're doing here now is using the existing shop template and just adding a couple of extra rules to it to tell it to add a variable to this um, to this as well so now that we've got shop item one and shop item two, we're gonna go ahead and change our askers to be those messages, which is what we originally had here. Shop item one and shop item two. Shop item one and shop item two. Awesome, now when we test that out, it should work if it's set up correctly. So we're gonna do number one. You can see upgrade one happened and we minus 100.
Now we upgraded number 1.2, but you can see our variable didn't upgrade here. So we're going to go back into our rules and see why that didn't happen. I probably just missed out on the message. So we'll sort that out now. Um, so what do we have? Shop item 1, shop item 2, and shop item 2 purchased. We'll zoom in a bit so you can read it. Um, shop item 2 purchased. We can minus 100 here. Shop item 2. We're going to check if we have 100. And okay, let's see if that works now. I think we didn't have enough money because we set it at 200. And you can see now it works. We have purchased the upgrade, we purchased that upgrade, and now we can't afford anything. So it sh should let us know that we can't afford it, but it still says you have purchased upgrade 1.2. And here it says you still purchased upgrade uh, 1, which is not the case. Um, because this is the same message, um, what we need to do here is this needs to let it, this needs to be um, the purchased message not the actual shop item one because right now it's doing shop item one but we need a purchase or a fail to send it here so I need to change that that's my fault shop item one purchased and shop item two purchased now we'll go and try one more time and this should work perfectly now okay we've purchased upgrade one and we've purchased upgrade two and now we're too poor for this upgrade and nothing changes we can do that for the first one as well perfect and what we can do now is join battles the longer you survive the more money you get or you can spend that money on the wheel but um, we don't have enough money for the wheel either so we'll just pour all around um, and then when you win a battle or survive long enough you get more currency and then you can use that for more upgrades or spinning the wheel or some other things but we're focusing on upgrades upgrades today so what can we do with this now um, we do have two local variables, we've got upgrade 1 and upgrade 2. Uh, we need the rule system to read what our local variable is when we're just being teleported to the battlefield. And when we're on the battlefield, we want something to spawn that's related to our variable that will have a upgrade or something of that sort. Uh, we can do a collectible to begin with and we'll bring it over there just a bit soon so let's um let's get one of these trophies and we'll duplicate we'll bring it out here and we're just going to play around with some settings until we get our desired result okay so we've got a collectible and with this collectible um we send the message, uh, but what we can also do is, I think it's called power up, power up, that's my dog if you can hear that, um, power up, we have speed, and we can raise the speed and the duration of the player, and we can have like 10%, 20%, 30% for depending what upgrade they have. So if we do 10%, we can acquire it on collision. Um, we can have a display name if we want to. We can have a sound, um, whatever the case may be. 
message to send and broadcast type is to everyone. Don't really need that to be honest, I don't think at this stage. Uh, so what we want to do now is just pick this up to see if it gives us our speed. I don't know if it gave us our speed. I'll remove the collectible and a plant so it doesn't teleport us and we'll see if this works. Okay, so we've got our 10% speed now. So in battle, we'll be a little bit faster than everyone else that hasn't got the upgrade. And the idea is to bring out the 10%, 20% or 30%, depending if your upgrade is one, two or three. And most battles last for about a minute. It takes a minute for the center to reach the middle. I mean, the borders to reach the middle to shrink. Um, so 60 seconds is a pretty good amount of time uh, to have that speed increase. All right, so we've got our 10% speed. I'm going to go ahead and save that as a preset. So speed 10%. Now we're going to make this 20%. And save that as a preset. And next, we're going to make that 30% and save that as a preset. So now we have one one of each. Cool. Now we want to bring this out into the battlefield depending on the player. So this is position one where an asset spawner occurs and we can put this position of the teleport. Uh, we can encase the player, I reckon is a good idea. and then spawn the asset on top. I don't know if I have a right thing in my avatar, uh, in my uh, library. Ah, oh, here we go. That's wish listed. I want something that's owned. Basic. Let's see if I can fit into this. Go ahead and bring this up. Just make sure it's uh, center as possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, vision for that. And this is at position one. I just wanna see if the avatar actually fits in it. And what we can do here for the sakes of testing is decrease the amount of time it will take for the game to begin. We don't want to wait 30 seconds for each test each time. Sorry, I got some hiccups. All right, so we're gonna look for the countdown. And the number 60 is attached to it, so it should be easy to find. Sorry, was it number 30? Here it is, so to count down, we'll just make it five seconds, nice and quick. Just get it out of the way. We'll jump in. We want to layer one. And after five seconds, it'll put us in our box. All right, awesome. And I am in the box, and I can't get out. And now I'm floating because I'm in the box, and the game has begun. But you can see we're in the box. <laughs> Alright, so that works. Um, what we want to do now is spawn v right cup. So we will have an asset spawner. We want to see uh, speed 
to be spawned. Uh, but we want to spawn that with a specific specific number of the local variable. How do we do that? That's a great question. So we're going to figure that out now. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. Take a sip of my tea. And we need to do some comparisons. I don't know how it could work, but I'm thinking we use a volume. <coughs> so this thing will have a volume. And we'll just make it a box, one by one by one. And when we detect it, we want to um, check upgrades. We want to check upgrades and it will go to the rule system. And we'll go to the rules and we'll do some comparing and see if it works. Uh, we'll find a new space to work with, which is somewhere down here. We'll go rules, comparisons, uh, compare numbers. And what we'll do here is check upgrades. And we want to check the upgrade of number one. And if it equals to one, uh, we'll send uh, spawn uh, speed 10. Just keep it simple. Uh, we'll go ahead and duplicate this and we want to check upgrades one again but for number two and then we'll say spawn speed 20 and one more for upgrade number three and we'll say spawn speed uh, 30 now the issue is um, these messages sent to all, I believe. So we need to have these comparisons for each eight players and have these individualized. So um, we could say check check uh, player one and check player one, check player one, and then duplicate this and have this for check player two. because when these messages get sent out, they need to go to the right asset spawner. And if it's not on the right asset spawner, it's not gonna work. Uh, so, we'll, And this one will start getting intense with the grid board because this is just for one upgrade for eight players. There might be another way to do this or something easier. Just let me think about it for a second. Um, hmm. Because we can uh, individualize the player's number. Player number. Can we use that for the location? So check upgrade spawn speed 10. It will then check what player number it is and then spawn at that location. I will check that out and see if that works. So we're gonna go ahead and say, um, Maybe it is compare numbers. Maybe it's another compare number. Hmm. Because if we duplicate this eight times, 
and we're going to do this now just to see the grid board so we've got one two three four five six seven eight we're just in time or just in the uh, grid space white zone getting into the red zone just means that it will take longer for the editor to load into the rule system but it will still perform well in the multiplayer game I believe okay so for this one here we're going to check upgrades we're going to see if our upgrade is one uh, upgrade is one two or three and we can say spawn we'll just put this one here as player one uh, p1 uh, speed 10 and we can go ahead and do that to all of them and we send that to the correct asset spawner and we'll visualize the asset spawner so I won't make it invisible and what we can do here is give that message and then I can duplicate it Twenty for the twenty percent, and then just uh, change the number from ten to twenty, and then we duplicate again with Control D, and we're going to make that thirty. Edit logic, and we'll change that to thirty. All right, I'm going to save and test this. And we'll go ahead and purchase these upgrades in the shop and see if it works. So we've purchased upgrade one. We've picked up the first one. We can see we're out of the box and you can see our first we don't even need to have the box at this stage I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and you can see the first one was our trophy here and you can have it on the actual player so what you can do is stack these on the actual spawn location like such and now the speed will be applied to the player as soon as they teleport there because it's looking in their um, in their local variable to see what it should be so I can go ahead and get the first one Did we pick up anything? I don't know if it spawned or not. I guess we shouldn't stack them yet. Let's see if it actually works first. 30. Well, the 10% did. Just check in the 20% now. Speed 20%. Okay. That's weird. It's not spawning now. It did spawn before.
let me double check it. So we've got p1.speed.10. Let's go to back to the rule system just to double check that one. Ah, you know what it is? Uh, the box that I deleted was the volume that was detecting that, um, detecting the actual, it was going to the rule system and I deleted it. So we want to check upgrades. That's why it's not working. Okay, that's easy to fix. So you put that on the actual spawner itself and that will be the volume. And a volume will say check upgrades. And we want to take that to the rule system. Okay, that should all work now. We'll quickly do another test. And then if it works, we'll stack them. So if I upgrade this to level two, I can now pick up the first position. And you can see number two is there. And when I pick it up, I got 20% extra speed. And that lasts for 60 seconds or while the battle is in place and you can see it's spawned again because I use I triggered the the avatar uh, sorry to uh, teleport again the um, uh, the volume is what I'm looking for so this volume was triggered again and a good way to stop that as well maybe is to change the box to one to one to one and you can raise that up in the air a bit and then you can have um, these collectibles pretty much right under it or even on it but i say under it give the um the game maker some time to register make that invisible, invisible and invisible. Stack it and stack it. Perfect. And this volume now doesn't reach the ground anymore. So you won't be able to get that extra, extra boost. It will only happen once you'll fall into battle. And that should be it. And of course I'll make the upgrades more expensive so that way it requires the um, players to play quite a few games to get these upgrades. It's not done really quickly and that's the reason why you want to keep playing to improve the player's skills. So you can see we've picked that up. We've got 20% speed and now for the next 60 seconds we have an upgrade. We can um, jump off and we earn 12 money for that battle. We can go back and pick a new one. I kind of moved. You can see I can jump and hit it. So we don't want that either. Um, but we can invent systems where the player has to fall through an invisible tube uh, when they teleport and it's a lot higher. Um, things like that. So that's not a big deal. These are very solvable problems. Uh, but the logic is working and that's all that matters at this point. So you can have like an invisible tube. Uh, player spawns through, j falls through, um, collects their collectible and then brings, uh, and then we can bring out an asset spawner that has different weapons so weapons that might have bigger walls or shoots faster or both but with the uh, weapons um, you need to make a preset for each 
each type. So you're going to have to work out how many you'll need for each player. And, and its location. So let me bring out a preset for that. And we'll say gun one. I don't know why that's happening, but okay, that's gun two. This is gun one. I'll go ahead and save over that one because it looks like it's got the old picture. Might be something that I can't fix. I'll delete that. So right now we have a wall 1.64 by 64 coming out um, and we have here uh, the speed that it shoots like the delay so every three seconds there's going to be a new wall um, but we can upgrade our wall so it's bigger and what we need to do now is just go into vox edit and build another wall that's bigger so I'll go ahead and save that and I'll go onto the Sandbox website. Or I, can, or I think I can just open Vox Edit. Let's have a look. We'll see if it's recently been used. Uh, yep, it has. So go ahead and click on that. And all we do here is just double the length, something like that. Obviously you'll give better naming conventions, I hope. Um, it doesn't need to be taller, it can just be wider. Basically, uh, just change the wall a bit. So when you upgrade, it's now easier to get targets because your wall is now wider. Of course, this um, these mechanics, the logic here is just to give you an example of how to apply upgrades and use um, these variable tricks. But um, you can apply this any way you choose. You go ahead and upgrade this, uh, export this, sorry. Sorry, I'm really tired. So I'm mucking up my words. All right, I'm just uploading this now to the Game Maker. And this is called Wall Border uh, 64 by 32. Okay, so that's now uploaded. Cool. And next we want to have a block. And we can just move this block 32 and we'll duplicate that. Something like that. And we go File, Upload. And this will be the solid wall we'll put in the middle so the players can't jump through. I'll just go ahead and upload that now to the Game Maker. It's on the other screen so you won't be able to see that part.
Okay. Cool. They're now upgraded in Game Maker. We should be able to bring that out. So that's our new red wall. I'll bring that over here. I'll type in the word border. No, it's 64. Um, hmm. Let me just see what I called it. I think I uploaded it to the wrong account. So I'm just going to go ahead and log out of my other account. That doesn't help, does it? Let me log in to the right account. Upload the right asset to the right account. That will help. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm in the wrong account. And that's why it's not showing up. Let's try that again. Just change it by one hexadecimal so it doesn't recognize a duplicate. And I kind of now need to do the border one again, which is a shame. But I'm uploading this box now, so red solid wall 64 by 32. And that's now going on to the right account this time. And I'll go ahead and open up the the border one that's already on the, my account so I don't have to recreate the borders um, here we go I'll open that inbox edit cool we're gonna save that as whatever and now we're gonna extend this We'll just do this one more time. This doesn't take very long to do. Okay, we can save that, upload this one. And now since it's on the right account, we'll be able to see it inside Game Maker. red border wall 64 by 32 go ahead and make that a prop common catalyst and upgrade okay That should be fine now. Back to the game maker. Now we've got our solid wall and our border wall. 
And what we can do here is bring out the preset that this thing shoots, which is wall one, 64 by 64. Um, so we'll go preset, there's the wall one, 64 by 64. And for some reason, I can't click it. Ah, here we go, it's loaded now. Perfect. And what I can do here is uh, just simply replace this asset. So I can go ahead and replace. We're gonna put in the 64 by 32. And we just simply hit replace with the replace tool. And we can do the same with the solid. Just simply make that invisible again. And that's pretty much it. And I believe the, that here is the, the, pair, the main, yes it is. Go ahead and copy that. And we'll save that, because I don't think that's 64 anymore. I think that's 128. Okay, now I can go ahead and delete that. We will make sure it comes out of this preset. So we got wall one, but this is the one we want, 128. And I think that's it. So if I bring this up here and click end, I'm going to click Control S and save it because GameMaker has lost all the hierarchy and you can see changes couldn't be saved to try again. So there's something going on. Ah, what's this? This is probably why. Okay, so it saves. That's really good because I just saw um, someone opened up a ticket in Discord with an error that they can't save and I don't know why. And I think that was just the answer. Anyway, I pick it up. And now you can see the walls are bigger. So now we can apply that function to an upgrade. So when I play upgrades, their walls will be bigger than everybody else's. The escape room artist. Welcome. Yes, I am the peasant king, for sure. King of the rats. So here we can now apply the exact same thing where we can check upgrades and we can check upgrades for the weapon. So we'll go to our rule system and apply that. Okay, so we've got check for upgrades. And this is for player one. Uh, I'm gonna keep it as player one here as well. Player one, upgrade two. And here we can just click upgrade one to upgrade two. And this will be for our second ability. And we can check for one, two, and three. And instead of spawn speed, we can say spawn uh, wall one. Spawn 
wall two and spawn wall three. And that will be for upgrade two. And we can edit logic and instead of start game, it will be wall spawn wall one and that will uh, spawn wall number one. If we duplicate control D for this one, we change it to wall two, which is this one here. And we'll just change the message to spawn wall two. Awesome, we'll control S and we'll test that out. Hey PG, how's it going? What are we building here? All right, so I'm building a PVP game. Uh, eight players and it's a short game battle royale in the middle. And what I'm doing now is showing people how to have individual upgrades for the mini game so you can have faster speed or better weapons and only you have that if you've bought it in the lobby and so far it's actually working out there are limitations with space and there's probably ways to optimize it but for now we're just getting the logic working so if I upgrade to wall one and then I upgrade to wall two Okay, so the game will start in four seconds. Oh. I can't see my spawn and it shot straight away, which is, um, that's quite strange. Let's see what's going on. Uh, so sp wall 1, 128 by 64. Let's bring that out again. Oh no, I'm supposed to bring this out, aren't I? Which is gun 1 shooter, and I haven't saved it as the right thing. Okay, so this is why. So gun 2 shooter, or gun uh, wall gun wall gun 2 shooter. I think this is the way to do it, and I don't need one for each like I did before. Um, I think I can simplify that, so that's not a problem. Uh, but I did it because of the wall killing issue. Okay, not a problem. We'll work that out later. So I'll go ahead now and bring out the right thing. Um, which is that. And this one's gun one shooter, okay. All right. Okay, okay, okay. So, if we upgrade to our wall one, let's go ahead and test that one out. Okay, here we go. And when I pick that up, it should be the small wall. Perfect. All right. Now, if we upgrade that again, and that will be just for me as a player, not everybody else, then I pick that up. When I spawn in, it should be the bigger wall. Hey, that's awesome. It works. So, the buff system here works and if I pick up someone else's gun it will just be the small wall see because it will spawn the one that the player is supposed to get which is the big one um, and now the same thing happens with speed so if we decide to upgrade our speed And 
then we begin our, our battlegrounds. Now we have 20% speed. So now we're actually faster than everybody else for at least, you know, one minute in this battle. So you can give a player individual speeds or individual weapon upgrades in their spawn, spawn location using local variable and a comparison to check uh, and then use an asset spawner to bring out the right things using the comparison and the rules uh, into the asset spawners which is a quite a little cool little trick to be honest using this knowledge can really open up quite a lot of different games um, which allows multiplayer games where players can have their own money their own upgrades for battle keeps everything individual and the players will need to keep playing each other to earn more money so they can come back into the lobby and buy more upgrades or save up for bigger upgrades and you can make all sorts of things so uh, I did a speed boost and I did different weapons that have like different size sh shooting um, you can do other things like um, you can make the walls shoot faster for instance What else is there? What else does a power-up have that we could probably use? Let's check it out. So I haven't really used it to be honest. In my games, because my games that I'm making don't really require this, except for this one now. So we've got attack power, damage resistance won't help, health won't help, oxygen won't help. So speed's pretty much the only one for this type of game. But if you have obbies and stuff, um, or the racing game jam we got at the moment, you can do um, speed items, and the first player to get it will get like increased speed. Um, or a player can take an alternative path to pick up a speed buff, but it might be a bit slower. But if the speed buff, um, if you get it, and don't make many mistakes, it could be a, a long-term advantage. Things like that be cool to have more in this list in the future so that's how we get it and that's using just two we have options for more um, for more upgrades but really uh, that's completely up to you I'm just here to show you the logic and to give you inspiration and ideas for your own games and what's how you can apply the rule system into your own games and how it actually works with individual players um, it's good to get these sort of ideas and this was this won't upgrade this is in a wrong spawn location so that's a game loop for you now I can sit here setting it all up one by one um, but I pretty much just showed you how to set all that up in game in gameplay there's probably ways to simplify this and I'll probably need to think about it a bit more but I just wanted to go on stream and continue this map and show you if it's possible or not this is the first time I've put this together uh, I worked it out while dreaming one day and I thought you know that could work I'll test it out next time and it looks like it works quite well uh, the only issue I see is it requires six comparisons two different upgrades uh, only up to level three and you can see the grid space is going to be full and that's just for one player uh, I probably need one grid for each player because we need to spawn uh, their asset and their weapons uh, at their spawn location so now I need to work out is there a way I can use fewer rules to get the same result but at each location and that will save me from doing eight eight sets for eight spawn locations for eight players um, so there must be a way to do that and I'll probably think about it after this stream uh, but it's good to see that it, this functions actually work and it gives more variety to players more gameplay opportunities so you can individualize resources and upgrades for PvP games um, so yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm feeling a bit tired, so I'm going to go get some rest. 
But if you have any questions or want to know more, uh, just send me a message on Discord. I'm always happy to help. And I'll probably see you guys again same time next week. And we'll expand a little bit more on this as well. Uh, I'll probably do another stream on my own channel uh, if I want to do something sooner. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. And um, have a great day. All the best.